Good morning. One of the things that I have really appreciated here at DUMC that a lot of churches have actually gotten away from in recent years is that we actually do celebrate the liturgical seasons of the church. And so often we celebrate those liturgical seasons with music. I have always found rich meaning in the liturgical rhythms that lead us through the Christian year. And this Sunday in our Christian year is known as Christ the King Sunday. And so the purpose of this day is to offer a reflection on the fulfillment that Christ brings to the reign of God as we celebrate the reign of God through Christ the King. Now, you may not have heard very much about this particular Sunday in the Christian year. You may even think of it as something that only the Catholics celebrate. But it's actually been a part of the Christian calendar since 1925. It was initiated by a pope, but then embraced not only by Catholics, but by Protestants. And so Episcopalians and Anglicans and, yes, even Methodists celebrate it. In some religious traditions, they even celebrate it with a festival or a feast. Whenever this occasion is celebrated, the reign of God is revered as we lift up the kingship of Christ. The reign of God, the kingship of Christ. These can be difficult concepts for us to grasp in our society. When we think of someone exerting kingship or authority over us, ideas of monarchy come up for us. And we don't live in a monarchy. We live in a democracy. We don't like the idea of anyone reigning or ruling over us. Truth be told, we resist the idea of anyone even having authority over us. We bristle at the thought of someone telling us what we should do or how we should live. So many times we ignore authority or we deny it or we take issue with it or we avoid it at all costs. More often what I think we value is our own personal sense of authority. We value setting the course for our own lives, determining who we're gonna be how we're going to live without any outside forces influencing us. We don't want to be ruled. Instead, we want to be independent. We want to be self-sufficient. We value the freedom to make our own choices and to make our own mistakes, too. And whether we succeed or whether we fail miserably, we want to be able to say, in the words of that great theologian Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. (laughs) There is only one problem with this kind of independent self-sufficiency and freedom. It presumes that you and I know best, friends, and we don't know best. Not for ourselves, not for others, not for this world of ours. There is so much that we don't understand about the world. There's so many circumstances that are beyond our control, so many situations that we can't handle on our own. And left to our own devices, we will fail miserably. (laughs) And unfortunately, there can be catastrophic effects to that failure. We want to think we have everything under control, that we don't need any help figuring it out. But we are simply mistaken about that. All we have to do is read the paper, look at the news, watch CNN to see the signs of turmoil that exist in our world. There are serious problems in every direction that you look. We see division and discord and rivalries and quarrels. We see greed and selfishness and evil and corruption. We see poverty and racism and violence and injustice rising up all around us. Things have gotten out of hand. This kingdom that we've built for ourselves certainly isn't bringing us to any kind of peace. We need the help of someone who is 
greater than we are. We need the wisdom of someone who knows better than we do. We need the guidance of one who understands everything. We need authority beyond ourselves, especially when that authority is our sovereign God and King, the creator and redeemer and sustainer of the world and Lord of all. We would be foolish to have access to this kind of wisdom, this kind of guidance, this kind of authority, and not to take advantage of it. God always intended that we live under his rule and under his reign. He always intended that we have a Lord because he knew that we needed one. Our scripture for today speaks of this Lord who reigns over all. It's found in the book of Psalms, chapter 93. And this is one of seven Psalms that's referred to as royal or enthroned, as they speak of the Lord's majesty. And like many Psalms, this one was actually composed to be set to music and sung in worship. It was meant to be a hymn. Lifting up the reign of the Lord, offering a confession of faith and hope for the reign of God's kingdom on the earth. One of the things that I found really interesting in my study of this psalm is that it was written in war times. It was written in a time where circumstances had escalated to the point that they were beyond anyone's control. These were times when people needed to know that they would not be overtaken, but that they would be protected. And this psalm lifts up that protection. It uses the image of a flood that roars and thunders. It says, The Lord is more majestic than the thunders of the mighty waters, more majestic than the waves of the sea. And this points us to the protection that the Lord provides even when waters rage over us. In these times, people needed to be reminded that there was something out there that was greater than they were, that could give meaning and purpose to their lives. They needed to be reminded that this meaning was permanent, that it was not temporal, that it could last. And so this psalm really lifts up this permanence and saying, He has established the world, and it shall never be moved. His throne is established from of old, and He is everlasting. These were times when people needed to be convinced in whom they could put their trust. And this psalm provides this assurance in saying the Lord's decrees are sure. Holiness befets his house, O Lord, forevermore. This psalm highlights God's sovereignty from the very foundation of the world, and it paints a picture for us of a God who actually does reign over all. And this God provides us with solid ground, a firm foundation, a place of strength and stability. And this God is stronger than any circumstance that might threaten to overtake us. And he will protect us. And he will keep us safe. And he will provide the kind of stability that is sure and certain and will last forever. This is the God in whom we can place our trust and know that it is well placed. And this psalm also informs the picture that we all have of Christ as it points to the messianic age, anticipating the work of the Messiah. I think the reason that I was really drawn to this psalm for today's scripture is because it reminds us as we celebrate Christ the King that Christ's reign is the fulfillment of everything that had gone on before. Christ's reign, it's informed and it's undergirded and it's empowered by the sovereignty of God. And this sovereignty is something we can have confidence in. It's something we can be certain and sure of. It's something we can count on, something we can trust in. The confidence that we have in God, we also have in Christ. Because everything that the Father is, the Son is as well. God imparted all authority to Jesus. He exalted him, placing everything under his power, that he might reign supreme. And so not only does Christ represent God's sovereignty, 
He actually carries it along to its completion. After people had rebelled against God, turned away from him, Christ provided the way for them to be made right again. And in that provision, Christ saw through God's commitment to us forever. Because of Christ, our future is made sure. He is the fulfillment of every purpose that God ever had for us. And he offered a day when the whole world would recognize the reign of God's kingdom as he took his rightful place as God and king. I don't know about you, but I need this kind of Lord in my life. I need a Lord that I can be sure of and certain of, that I can count on and trust in forever. I need a Lord whose authority is higher and greater and better than mine. I don't have any misconceptions about my ability to handle things on my own. I won't be counting on myself or on anyone else for my foundation and my security. Because I believe that Christ is Lord, I'm willing to put myself into his hands. I'm willing to surrender my will to his, to entrust my life to him. And we all need that kind of Lord in our lives. When we are really convinced of his sovereignty, we will gladly submit to his authority. We won't ignore it or deny it or take issue with it or avoid it. We'll leave behind our independence and our self-sufficiency and even our freedom (laughs) And we'll allow him to rule and reign in our hearts. We'll let our loyalty to him transcend any other claim upon us. We'll surrender to him. We'll revere him. We'll serve him. This is what it means to live like Christ is king. And when we live life in his kingdom... We're going to know a peace and a freedom that this world can never offer us. His kingdom, unlike our own, it will last forever. This kingdom is where we should place our allegiance. It's where we should place our devotion. It's where we should place our trust as we make a confession of faith and hope for the reign of God's kingdom on the earth as together we all proclaim that Christ is King. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.